In the previous lessons, we've gone over some of the most fundamental text styling tags, including headings, all the way down to six, paragraph. We even covered some special and reserved characters, and also the span tag and the difference between the span tag and the paragraph tag in terms of line spacing. Finally, we left off with the link, one of the key features of HTML, the hyperlink. Now, we're going to go deeper into some text formatting tags, but before we do, I want to introduce a few shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts. I know I've been emphasizing those a lot in this course so far, and I want to continue emphasizing them. First of all, change my settings a little bit here in the text editor. See down here on the bottom where it says spaces four? I want to change the number of spaces to two as the default level of indentation. Uh, you can see there's a lot of white space here on the left of the text editor making my text overflow. You don't have to change this setting, but I also want to use this as an excuse to introduce some really important keyboard shortcuts. Notice that after I changed the setting, my default level of indentation did not return to two spaces. In fact, it's still one, two, okay, one, two, three, four. So in order to change the setting of my entire document to two spaces, I'm going to highlight the section of code that I want to unindent, and then I'm going to press shift and tab, and that's to unindent an entire block of code. To indent an entire block of code, I could press tab again. So I'll press shift and a tab to unindent that block of code, and then I'm going to highlight this block of code that I want to unindent, and then I'll press shift and tab again. And then the title I want to unindent, again, I'm only doing this so that my HTML file can be a little bit better formatted for the screen. I know some of you might be watching these on mobile devices. So one, I wanna make sure that the font size is large enough and also that there's not too much white space on the screen, especially uh, white space on the left here, which largely goes to waste and doesn't really make the code look better. So speaking of making the code look better, I'm also going to add some extra indentation where it makes sense. Now we're going to continue with some more text formatting tags. I'm also going to make sure there's some white space underneath this element right here, these two span elements. And then I wanna show you one other shortcut that's really helpful. And that's the shortcut to insert a comment. I don't think we've dealt with comments before, but to write a comment in HTML, it's the less than sign, exclamation mark, two dashes, and then two dashes, and then a greater than sign. Everything written in between here will be treated as a comment. There's also a shortcut to add a comment that a lot of text editors use, and this shortcut is probably the same with no matter which text editor you're using, and that is the command slash. And this is a backslash, so it's this character, the same backslash that we use to do the closing tags. So again, if you press command slash or control slash, if you, have a, if you have a Windows computer, if you press command slash or control slash, it'll create a comment. So I'm going to use that shortcut to discuss a little bit about what we're going to cover. And I just wanna point out a few more text formatting tags that we'll cover, including bold, italics, code, block quote, small, subscript, and superscript. Now that I've written out what we're going to cover, the formatting tags that we'll cover, I'll just highlight the one line that has all of these tags, and then I'll press command and slash to turn that line into a comment. Now that we have an overview of what the following code block will cover, Let's go ahead and just knock these out really quickly. So the bold and italics tags have a little bit of a gotcha in them. And the gotcha is that there are actually two ways to bold text. This is bold text. We actually want this, I actually want this to appear on a new line for better organization. So I'm gonna add two break tags here. Break one, break two. So there are actually two ways to bold text. One is the B tag, as you might expect for bold. The other one is the strong tag. 
And there's a very subtle difference between these two. And that subtle difference is that strong is used and read by web crawlers and search engines to emphasize certain text. And italics has a similar issue here, is that one way to italicize text is the I tag. And again, I'm gonna enter a break here because notice that bold, strong italics are all span style elements. They are not block elements, but rather inline elements. So in order to have them appear on a new line, we have to insert a break tag. Just make it really clear in our reference sheet this is bold text made using B, and again, and less than B, and then and greater than to make the B actually look like a tag. And then next, I'm gonna put a period here and say this is strong text made using ampersand less than, strong, and then ampersand greater than to make the strong actually look like an HTML tag inside the browser. And then next, italics text made using ampersand less than I, ampersand greater than. And then next we have the equivalent of strong for italics is EM, which stands for emphasis. And this is what you use to really emphasize certain elements. This has the benefit of better accessibility versus actual italics text. Uh, and by accessibility, I mean programs that are designed to read text out loud to the blind, for example, will place extra emphasis on text inside EM tags as opposed to text inside of I tags. So here we have italics text made using ampersand less than EM ampersand greater than. And just for better readability, I'm gonna put a period here at the end here, and then I'm gonna say, this is italics text made using EM. So that's bolding and italics. Now I'm gonna enter another empty white space here at the bottom. And the next tag we're gonna cover is the code tag. The code tag is used for showing code. I'm gonna put a line break here and notice that the font inside the code tag is different from the font in the rest of the document. We'll go into fonts more later in the course, but I just wanna let you know that this particular font, its style is monospace, meaning each letter takes up the exact same width on the page. Even spaces take up the same width on the screen in terms of pixels. However, most fonts in the browser have certain letters take up smaller amounts of horizontal space versus larger letters, like M takes up more horizontal space than I and L. This is because default browser fonts are designed for readability, but when writing code, you do need a monospace font in order to keep track of where you are in the code file. So the code tag will convert your text into the default monospace font used on a particular browser or operating system. The next tag we'll cover is the block quote. Let's enter a line break here. And you can see as soon as we start typing block, brackets will suggest us the block quote tag. And the block quote is almost exactly what it sounds like. It's, it's a tag used for indicating quotes. And I'm gonna quote Martin Luther King here. We must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. And let's put some quotations around here and then say Martin Luther King Jr. The block quote tag also has an optional property that we can specify called site which normally takes a URL, but I'm just gonna use that property to indicate that this is a quote by Martin Luther King Jr. Okay, home stretch. The small tag just uses a slightly smaller font size. So just use a slightly smaller 
font size with the, well, instead of doing the ampersand less than and ampersand greater than sign, let's use the new tag that we just learned, code, small, inside a code tag, and then write tag. Notice that this is the first time we've seen the nesting of elements inside of other elements. But it is possible, and in fact, it's really common. We've actually used it. The head tag and the title tag are both nested inside HTML tags. So you probably had some idea that we could nest elements, but this is the first time we've done it intentionally. So again, instead of doing the an ampersand less than semicolon, ampersand greater than semicolon, I just enclosed the word small inside the code tag to indicate that it is an HTML tag. Okay, just two more. Superscript and subscript. For this, again, I'm going to enclose everything inside a paragraph tag and just write a, a small mathematical equation to show superscript and subscript. X sup is for superscript, like sup, my friend. Sup, home diggity. All right, I'll stop. X squared equals nine. And then another paragraph tag to show you an example of the subscript. I'll write H and then sub like a sandwich or a subway to S O and then sub again four is sulfuric acid. And then after the x squared equals nine, I'll just write a quick descriptor made using code sub tag. And then after the sulfuric acid, I'm gonna end the sentence and say subscript written using code, the code tag, and then sub tag. Be really careful when writing tags inside of tags not to lose your spacing and not to lose your place in the sentence. So after scrolling back up the title of our document, Introduction to Text Formatting in HTML, I would say this is a fairly complete introduction to text formatting in HTML. Next time, we're gonna go into more advanced HTML elements.